guys, welcome back to the shop. This video is going to be a normal, regular shop update. Um, really the last one for 2016 and uh, a bit of a look back at some of the things and a look ahead at some of the things that I have planned. Um, first off, I'm very happy that the shop has now moved. It's a tremendous weight off my shoulders and normal machining and normal videos can and are going to resume. Um, I've had a lot of inquiries about you know the, the South Bend restorations, the pedestal grinder and the shaper. So the good news is is they're absolutely going to be resuming. Um, and if you noticed in some of the shop move update videos, you, you saw that I bought a, um, a 1956 South Bend 10K. That is going to be completely restored, redone, you know, to the best way possible. I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know if I, if I made the, de the decision yet, but I'm thinking about, um, you know, even getting the, the bed ground and, uh, you know, the compound and the cross slide all scraped in and stuff. If I could, if I could afford it and it's a, a good price, I'll definitely do it. But it's a, you know, it's a secondary lathe that I wanted to have for second operation. And it's also, you know, I, I sold my 13 to get an import lathe, you know, for, for the business part, for Maple Lane jobs and stuff. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I'm a South Bend guy, everybody knows that. And I just can't go without having a South Bend lathe. So it's, I, I think it's a, a crucial part of my shop and what got me started in all this, really. Um, so, good news to all the South Bend fans out there. There will be three more restorations um, kicking in full gear very soon in the next, you know, next week or so. Um, I've invited a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Tim Marks. He's going to be helping me with uh, with some of the part, some of these uh, restorations. He's a, he's a fellow a practical machinist guy, you know, South Bend guy. He restored a lathe. We met. You know, he lives local, um, and we we hang out. You know, we became friends, and now we we hang out. And he he did an amazing job on a heavy ten. Um, he's a he's a fantastic painter. So he's going to kind of show me the ropes on how to paint better, and and you know, it's one of the things I definitely wanted to. To improve in my skill set, so I, I invited Tim in to kind of help me with some of the the you know just the regular part of the restoration, and he's going to invite me into his shop, and we're going to do all the painting at his place. Um, part of the the part of that restoration, the video footage has been shot already a couple of days ago, so I'm just put, you know piecing that together. Um, and again, I'm, I'm excited to get back on the shaper and the, uh, the pedestal grinder. So those, those are going to come out nice because they're, they're at that stage right now where they're ready for painting. So, um, yeah, good, good things are coming with those. Another thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, I, I became a, uh, a member of Patreon. So I'm now on Patreon and, and, uh, you know, any support for the shop is obviously extremely appreciated, you know, goes into all the all the the video equipment and the time it takes and the materials and stuff um, and one of the things with patreon is you you know you're supposed to give extra content to your to your supporters and stuff and um, that's where I'm going to do a lot of my um, a lot of my restoration type work more of that I'm going to start getting some I'm going to actually buy some tools some old stuff small machines whatever and do a lot of reconditioning and a lot of re restoring um, you know I, I use that term lightly obviously we know a full restore is bringing things back into factory specs and stuff and I myself am not a scraper I don't know how to do scraping and whatnot but you know your, your basic kind of you know uh, revamping of stuff you know cleaning it up getting it back in, into use and stuff like that so I think that's going to be a lot of the extra content that I'll give back to to uh, supporters of, uh, of that as well as, um, I don't know, I was thinking about shooting some, some beginner tip type stuff. You know, my take on, on tool bit grinding and my take on, um, on uh, threading and knurling and stuff like that. I, I know we have so much of that stuff, but 
Lately, I've been getting a lot, you know, over the past couple months while I was doing the shop move, I got a lot of emails, a lot of personal emails, obviously because I wasn't putting out that much content. Um, but I got a lot of contact through email asking for different videos and stuff. And, all, you know, a lot of it was around South Bend Lades and, um, and beginner tips and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> you know, so I have some plans on, on doing some extra content for, you know, for Patreon supporters as well. And, um, you know, and obviously we're going to be doing more projects in, in the shop and the videos and stuff like that. So, T-shirts. I opened up the uh, the campaign again. That was an, that was a thing. Uh, some of the some of the guys on Facebook were asking me, you know, when I was going to have T-shirts available again. Uh, so I figured, you know, why not? I'll, I'll open it up. Uh, it, it, coincidentally, T Blaster sent me in, uh, you know, one of these emails that said, "Reopen your 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 past campaigns and blah 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 all that stuff." So. I've reopened the campaign. Uh, I have T-shirts available and I have hoodies because obviously it's the winter and right. These are great in the shop. <clears throat> so I have uh, I have Maple Lane stuff uh, on T Blaster going right now. The the campaign ends on Christmas Eve, <laughs> right right around the time that Santa will be dropping down the chimney. So. You know, if you order uh, a T-shirt, obviously you're not going to get in time for Christmas, but. T-shirts are now available again. Um, I thank everybody who bought a T-shirt, uh, you know, the, the first round. Um, thought it was pretty cool. Um, and, you know, I, I myself got a couple of, you know, Maple Lane stuff, which is cool. So, got a couple of tools I wanted to show. I got a couple of different, um, you know, small little hand tools. I went to a flea market a couple of weeks ago. It was the first time I actually went to a flea market. Um, I've been there... Uh, you know, strolling around uh, in the past with my parents when I was younger and stuff. But this time I actually went seeking some stuff. And uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. You know, there's different different tables with uh, all different types of tools. And it's overwhelming at times what you see. So I got, I got two or three little neat things that I, I wanted to share. Um, <clears throat> so other than that, you know, uh, within the next couple days, I'll be releasing the first of the South Bend Restoration, you know, the, the 10K. So take a look for that. Um, and have a, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah and, uh, and a tremendous New Year's. And we'll see you uh, probably early 2017 with some new, uh, with some new content. Um, other than that, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for staying with me for this year, and 2017 is going to be even better. Thanks. Done with the die holder. You can see it's uh, just you know turned down. We put some knurling on it. The knurling didn't come out very good at all. I'm not I'm not happy with it. I set it to the you know to the correct diameter. Uh, plunged in with my Eagle Rock tool. I don't know what happened. I obviously did something wrong. Now you'll notice over here in this die, I uh, I just relieved it a little bit because there was you know there's a lead-in chamfer on both sides, and this has to go to a shoulder for this part that I'm making right here. So you can see it's a 448 thread, which is really tiny and it goes right up to the shoulder. So I can't have a chamfer. Anyway. I had a bunch of these Morse Taper 3 uh, Arbors laying around and I think these are shop made. Somebody had made these and I got them when I bought some tools. Somebody included them. So they're not hardened. So what I did was I, I put it into the to the tailstock, uh, you know, like the video shows and I just drilled it out and then reamed it to 5 eighths. Um, and here is our little slide bar. So we have a 5 eighths through hole all the way through. Right, it just slides through, and then this just goes in. I mean, I could press this in, you know, uh, press it, Loctite it, pin it, whatever. But, you know, see it goes in like almost with an airtight fit. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, this goes into the tailstock, and it's just supporting this. That's all. It's just sliding back and forth. I, I suppose I could put like a little set screw just to hold it. Um, but let's go take a look and see what it looks like set up in place. Just going handheld here with the camera. Okay. 
Okay, so that goes in there. It slides right in. And there we go. Now the length that I have to thread those parts, <laughs> get this, is 156 thousandths. That's how long the threading travel is. So, you know, I'm gonna be able to just do this just by hand, holding it, got plenty of room. Again, quick and dirty uh, die holder. I might improve on this or maybe even make a new one as a project coming up, but there you go on the, uh, on the ice and lathe. It's working out pretty good. So this is a indicating micrometer. Um, I believe it's from VIS, the Polish company, V-I-S. Um, these are really neat. Um, you set your part, right? Let's say you wanted to, let's say, yeah, I got this 5 8 um, pin gauge right here. Let's say we wanted to check it. So you'd set your... Right, so 625, and when you bring it right to the zero, and you lock it, just doing this quick and dirty here, when you lock it, then when you press this, <clears throat> this is held at 625, and then when you come over here, it will tell you, um, you know, how far off you are in tenths. Let's see if we can get that in here. So you could see it does it in tens. And when you open this up, you can set it. This could be like a range. This is your, you know, your uh, your range values. You know, if if it's go or no go, and then you just lock that back in place. But yeah. Look at that, dead, dead on. You know, and you could, it's, it's good for when you're running parts off and you want to check it to see if there's any variation. So this is pretty neat. In fact, I got two of them. Now, this one is in, uh, is in tenths, and this one is in half tenths. So this is ridiculously accurate. This is a, this is an import brand now. It's a little, it's a little sticky. No, actually it's not sticky. It's just, it's not as smooth as this vis. This vis is really nice. So if you're looking for really high accuracy, then you could go with half tense. It's crazy. The next thing that I got, or, and the last thing that I got at the flea market was this. Um, right? It looks just like a normal pipe wrench, but it's not a pipe wrench. It's a regular flat wrench, but it's from Ford. And who knew Ford made tools? I didn't. But apparently, when I went from table to table, I started seeing lots of different Ford tools. Um, again, I'm sure a lot of you out there have seen these and know about this. I didn't. I thought it was pretty interesting. And for $3 to, to have a tool from Ford that probably has some kind of, you know, it, it's, it has stories, that's for sure. I don't know if it was used in the Ford plants making cars, but... I thought it was cool, and for a couple bucks, why not, right? Now this is in a flea market find. This is an Amazon purchase. Um, this is an ultrasonic cleaner, a Kendall ultrasonic cleaner. Now I got this for, for restoration work, and if you don't know what an ultrasonic cleaner is, it is a uh, it's a tank, and you fill it with solvent uh, or a degreaser. You put your parts in there. You can heat it up. You could set the temperature and a time interval, and it basically sends ultrasonic waves, which is uh, like sound waves, and sound waves that are between 20 and 400 uh, kilohertz. So it basically just blasts all the the grime and the crud off of off of your parts, um, and you know, in the in the degreaser obviously helps that along in the hot temperatures and whatnot. And it has a little drain right here when you're done with it and, and your solvent gets spent, you can just stick a bowl or something and you can uh, 
you could drain it. So this is pretty cool and this is going to be featured in the restoration videos. We're going to see how well it does. Now as I shown in my last shop update video, this is the VFD from my uh, surface grinder and it used to just dangle around and I haven't gotten any time to do this yet but I just mounted it on this piece of wood and I'm going to mount this piece of wood to the to the surface grinder itself connect up the control wires here to the drum switch you know and connect the motor wire back again um, I have to I have to redo it there's some liquid tight uh, conduit that I need to get and everything but the reason why I mention it is uh, I got a couple of requests to uh, to film this while I do it um, so you know I, th I think that'll be a pretty cool video for the guys who asked me you know if they could see it so that's going to be another video that's coming up shortly and lastly here's a little teaser and a challenge can anybody identify what's in that bin leave it in the comments <laughs>